There's nothing quite like these Marillion Deluxe sets to set the heart racing. So let's delve in, shall we? Holiday's Needing is a divisive album for many Marillion fans. Many seeing it as a misunderstood record and the others seeing it as something that sells perilously close to kind of Mike and the Mechanics. But it's also an album that uh, saw the band very much come to blows over the creative processes or lack thereof. At this juncture, Steve Hogarth was unaccustomed with the Marillion's pace in terms of writing and producing new music which is a bit like the M25 Circular on a congested Saturday afternoon. Let's not forget when Hogarth joined for season's end, a lot of the music had already been written, but this they were kind of writing from scratch, making this uh, once again another very difficult second album for the band. One defined by inactivity, Mexican food, magic mushrooms and porcine hallucinations. This, however, is an album for me that was way too glossy and poppy for my tastes. Uh, never quite cared for it uh, as I viewed it as a little bit too unmerillion. So I was interested to hear the new mix to see if some of that pop sheen had been removed. I was very fortunate to discuss the issue with Steve Rothery only about a month ago. Let's hear what he had to say about it. Chris is brilliant at doing certain things, especially in, in terms of pop production and, and, and tying down the essence of a song. But he, he worked a lot quicker uh, than we would normally work. And um, yeah, some of the rough edges were, were removed, uh, the way he would record the, uh, the drums on the, uh, with an electronic kit and then quantize the performances and stuff. Uh, and yeah, we were all kind of like, e and see how this turns out. Um, but it, you know, and it did reasonably well. I think it's a strong album. It's got some great songs on it. Um, it didn't achieve the mainstream success that EMI had hoped, um, and which is why, in a way, Brave is the reaction to that pressure that we felt from from EMI to conform. Uh, it was sticking two fingers up to you kind of uh, scenario. But having said that. Um, Stephen Taylor's just done the remixes of Holidays Needing, and it sounds fantastic. Yeah. You know, I always kind of found it a little bit glossy and lacking guts. That's the only way I can describe Even it. A bit more grit, has it? Than yeah, you know. it's got so much more power now. You can really hear how the songs should have sounded. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think people will be blown away when they hear, hear that. Mm. I think it's it's outstanding. By the time they got to make this album, uh, they'd already toured extensively and felt that the majority of the fans had accepted Steve Hogarth. Nevertheless, they were still under a lot of pressure from EMI, who wanted singles from them, as well as a, a more commercial sound. They wanted another Kaylee. So the band uh, decided to decamp down uh, to Brighton at uh, Stanbridge Farm in order to write new material before, of course, going back to Hook End Manor to actually record. As I said, there was a, a lot of struggle in terms of getting the material together. It took a long time and a lot of frustration as uh, Steve Hogarth felt that Marillion were doing things uh, at a laboriously slow pace. In fact, I think at one point he says, I went away for a while, came back, and they'd, uh, all they'd done is make a decision on a, a different chord change. But of course, what defines this album is the bringing in of uh, Chris Neal. Uh, they brought in Chris Neal because he had a very uh, mainstream polished uh, approach to producing music. He'd already worked with, I believe he'd worked with Celine Dion, I'm not sure about that, but he certainly worked with Mike and the Mechanics. And there was a, a balance to be struck between EMI's pop aspirations and the very soul of the band. An interesting aside, the cover for the album was actually inspired by a book called uh, Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. I hope I pronounced that correctly. Splintering Heart, of course, is the first song. Its working title was Eric. Its beginning was uh, very different to the one they ended up with. Uh, you know, lots of squeals of guitars, I think, instead of that menacing chug that we're now used to. Of course, Cover My Eyes, where it's very U2, like beginning, it's very hooky. And I think it's one that certainly ticked the boxes for EMI. The Party is very much a Hogarth number, described by Mark Kelly as a naive sounding song. Although Pete Travis, uh, believes it to be classic Marillion. No One Can is a song I don't really like very much, to be honest with you. 
Um, a good pop song, I suppose, but therein lies the problem, I think. EMI didn't promote it well enough, which is a shame, really, because I think this would have done very well for them had EMI, you know, put some put some weight behind it. We get the title track, of course, Holidays in Eden, which is very much, I think, about losing yourself or finding yourself in travel, I believe. Waiting to Happen is a, is a great love song. But the highlight of the album for me, and I think for many Marillion fans, is the... Um, the tracks that end the album it ends on a very um, epic note, I think, with This Town and Rake's Progress. Rake's Progress, of course, is an interesting title as well, because it alludes to uh, William Hogarth's famous moralistic painting as the, as the um, pointing towards the dangers of the big city, uh, written by Steve Hogarth. But This Town and, uh, as I said, Rake's Progress talks about how... Um, it's a song very much inspired by Steve Hogarth's move to London and how these changes uh, affect uh, an individual. Overall, I have to say it's an impressive set. Um, these Marillion Deluxe sets often are. Uh, great live stuff, which has been uh, beautifully remastered as well. We get the Hammersmith gig, as well as the um, uh, TV performance in Germany. I love that uh, filmed performance as well. The promo video is a little a little bit Mike and the Mechanics, I think, but it was the time uh, for this sort of stuff. With these promo videos, you can hear the steady corporate beat of EMI uh, behind them, uh, to which the band had to kind of dance to, I think. Anyway, let's take a closer look at this package, and then we'll return to discuss the new mix. Well, here we have the item itself. It's the limited edition three CD and Blu-ray set of Marillion's Holidays in Eden. Uh, so let's get this cellophane off, shall we? So it's a hardback and sturdy item, excellent quality as you can see. Uh, opens up a so to reveal the first two discs. Let's take a closer look at the disc, shall we? If you want to see that, I think they're all going to be the same. Holidays need deluxe. Pretty young looking uh, Steve Hogarth there. I love it when they lavish a lot of time and attention on these sort of things and you get lots and lots of background information. Of course with this set you get the documentary as well, which is always good. Excellent, love the artwork. Brilliant illustrations as well for the uh, for the lyrics. Really looking forward to hearing this. Uh, I always find this album uh, a little bit too poppy and glossy for my tastes. Uh, the new mix is going to be interesting. So disc one is Holidays in Eden, 2022 remix, of course, splintering, heart cover my eyes, the party, no one can, Holidays in Eden, dry land waiting to happen, 
This town, the rate's progress and a hundred nights. And disc two is live at Hammersmith in 1991, uh, part one. I wonder if that's the same as we get on the actual Blu-ray. So I'll take a look in a minute. So with the Blu-ray we get the documentary, of course, the audio contents in Surround Sound DTS HD Master 5.1, B-Sides and Bonus Track Sympathy, How Can It Hurt, a collection, a Sympathy Acoustic Version, I Will Walk on Water, Splintering Heart, Live at the Moles Club, You Don't Need Anyone, Moles Club Demo, No One Can, Moles Club Demo, The Party, Again Demo, This Town Demo, Waiting to Happen, that's a demo again, and the epic Fairground at Mushroom Farm Demo. Video content, of course, is uh, Pain and Heaven, the story of Holidays in Eden, Cover My Eyes promo, No One Can promo, Dryland promo, and Disc 4 Blu ray video content, uh, Rock Blast in Concert German TV. So, no, it's not the same concert. The German TV gig is um, Splintering Heart, Cover My Eyes, Slump and Half, uh, Uninvited Guest, The Party, Easter, No One Can This Town, Rakes Progress, Kaylee, King of Sunset Town, Holidays in Eden, Hooks and You Freaks. Incommunicado, Garden Party, Sugar Ice, Script for a Justice Tear. Uh, if you want to know what's on the the Hammersmith uh, concert, I will uh, go back and look at that for you. So we get Splintering Heart, Garden Party, Dryland, King of Sunset Town, The, the Party, Easter, the Space, Holloway Girl, A Collection, Waiting to Happen, Cover My Eyes, Lords of the Backstage, Blind Curve, Uninvited Guests, This Town, Rakes Progress, 100 Nights, Slant and Half, Holidays Need, and Hooks in You, No One Can, Berlin, Kaylee, and Incommunicado. So there we are. I don't think I've missed anything, have I? No, I don't think so. It's a nice set, it's got to be one of the nicest sets they've put out so far, I think. I think they're trying to uh, compete with the Jethro Tull sets. And there we go, close that up. So there it is. There's the spine. That's the back, and the, of course, the front again. So this new mix, as Steve rather quite rightly points out, has a bit of a, a bit more edge to it. It's not so glossy or varnished. Um, it has improved the album a lot for me. Uh, this is an album that doesn't rate very highly for me in the Merlin Canon, but this new mix certainly lifts it up a notch or two. The vocals seem less buried, and there's a nice balance, I think, between that and the other instrumentation. I haven't heard the 5.1 mix. I don't have that sort of system. Splintering Heart sounds more menacing, if that makes sense. Um, it kind of ex when they explode, the music sounds less affected and more real. Uh, less of a smudge and more of a, the sound of the band actually playing. I mean, the drums and cymbals on this sound absolutely great. Cover My Eyes, the guitar start is really powerful and clear. I hear stuff that I've never noticed uh, before in the original mix. No One Can is one I still kind of skip. Holidays in Eden, the drums sound... Uh, more powerful and clearer but this town and the rakes progress uh, is absolutely astonishing um, it sounds really heavy as well it's uh, much closer to the kind of the band sound the merlin sound that we want i think again the vocals are clearer there's a little um even a little guitar lick which i never noticed before uh, it sounds like as i said it sounds like the band are playing live uh, but back then if that makes sense uh, and the Rake's Progress sounds beautiful, Pete Travis' liquid bass and those guitar squeals platforming, uh, beautifully platforming Hogarth's voice, I absolutely love this. Anyway, so you, there you have it, that's my review and unboxing of the new Marillion Deluxe box set Holidays in Eden. There will be a purchasing link just below this video, and uh, let me know if you intend to buy it. So I will leave you hoping that you've enjoyed this video. And with my closing salvo, which by now you know is, uh, hope you're well, staying safe, but more importantly, you keep listening.